just want to die. I just want to die. I just want to die. Okay, I will level with you. I started the recording, realized that the red gloves I normally wear weren't to hand and couldn't be bothered to go looking for them. So I just picked up the nearest thing I had, which was the rubber lobster claws. So that's, that's why we're wearing these. I just want to go. Anyway, regular viewers will know that I'm a man of 16,832 talents, including an awesome analytical skill, enhanced sexual prowess, and my personal favourite, an ability to recall the silliest things said in the game industry. It's why I'm so good at pointing out Ubisoft's lies, because I can recall the contradictions. I also remember Phil Harrison and every nonsensical thing he said. I remember Rovio, the Angry Birds dev, and what they said about consoles years ago and I hold on to these things just waiting just waiting for an excuse to use them in the Jimquisition and today is the day the rumors of single players demise are greatly exaggerated in the wake of Visceral's murder at the hands of Electronic Arts, there has been much discussion on the apparent death of single player. See, the studio serial killer known as EA not only added Visceral to its victims list, it quasi-axed the developer's Star Wars game, a narrative-driven, linear, single player experience. The game Visceral was working on has been moved to EA Vancouver to meet the demands of focus-tested marketing bullshit. In EA's own words, we have been testing the game concept with players, listening to the feedback about what and how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. It has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we needed to pivot the design. Yeah, pivot the design for a focus group of 12 year olds. I remember what you fucking did with Fuse. The basic takeaway from this is that EA is doing what EA often does, at least when it's not too busy murdering game studios. It appears to be desperately chasing the latest trend and playing catch up with Activision. Again. Just like last generation, where the publisher kept desperately trying to make its own Call of Duty, it appears EA is eyeing the success of games like Destiny with greed in its eyes and lust in its groin as it and many other companies pursue online-centric multiplayer experiences that can be exploited with constant additional content and monetization strategies. The industry calls this the Games as Service model, though the only real service comes in the form of customers serving up their cash to publishers on a silver friggin platter. With all this talk of closures and cancellations, many have talked about the so-called death of single player games. You need not look far to find alarming headlines and hot takes discussing how solo experiences are going the way of the dodo. But as bleak as the industry has become, and it looks fucking bleak at times, as easy as it is to look upon the works of AAA companies and despair, I think I can say, with a degree of confidence and a small dash of hope, that single player games aren't going away anytime soon. First, we should pull back a little bit and look at just how long the apparent death of single player games has lasted. This discussion goes back years and years and years and years. In fact, this goes back as far as at least 2008. Former Sony and Atari executive Phil Harrison was one of the original harbingers of doom, a man who seems to decide spies single player games and has been calling for their execution for almost an entire fucking decade. Here is what Harrison said in 2008, less than a year after Bioshock came out and was a smash success. Alone in the Dark is a beautifully crafted single player adventure game. I don't think the industry is going to make many more of those. I just don't think consumers want to be playing games that don't have some kind of network connectivity to them or some kind 
kind of community embedded in them, or some kind of extension available through downloadable content on Bill Harrison. The fact that Harrison thinks this awful shit is a beautifully crafted game should be enough to have him discredited forever, but his presumptuous, blatantly wrong statements should help contextualise the current situation. The fact it's been going on for near 10 years and we still have plenty of single player games should tell you more about the executives who want them to die than the actual state of the industry itself. A number of besuited moneymakers would certainly like to see single player games go away, since they're harder to monetize than online experiences, but for as long as they've tried to tell us the narrative driven game is dead, their bullshit driven narrative hasn't played out as predicted. This is ridiculous. Now I rarely do this, but I also think the community itself, us lot, deserve to shoulder a little bit of blame for the current situation. For many years, linearity was a dirty word among message boards, comment sections, and even games media itself. For a period of time, again in the mid to late 2000s, it wasn't uncommon to see a game get pilloried for being too linear, as folks demanded multiplayer additions to all their games. This led to ridiculous situations such as Overlord getting a multiplayer mode, even though, as I've said before, it had literally two players in the world at one point. Me and one other person. Way back in 2012, the discussion about linearity and replayability was so heated, I ended up making a Jimquisition about it. Let's have a look at a positively ancient clip. It's as if people have forgotten how we used to play video games. You know, before online multiplayer became shoehorned into everything, whether it fit the game's premise or not. To me, replay value comes in whether or not I want to play a game again. Not whether or not I can take it online or get multiple endings. To say a linear, single-player game inherently lacks replay value is akin to suggesting that a book is not worth rereading, or a movie cannot be enjoyed a second time. You are the sad reason why games like Bioshock 2, Dead Space 2, and the upcoming Metro Last Light have diverted resources away from their previously excellent campaign modes to cram in online play in order to satisfy a misguided cultural zeitgeist that suggests gamers are so fucking easily distracted and thick that they can't concentrate on something that doesn't change gears every five minutes. The sales success of games like Bioshock and the more recently released L.A. Noire seem to suggest that there's still a demand for narratively driven, single-player games that are secure enough in the magnetism of their experience that they don't need multiplayer in order to cynically keep the crowds drawn in. Do you remember when cynically shoehorned multiplayer was one of the bigger problems in the game industry? How far we fucking fallen. It's also important to note that, perhaps due to so many games being about killing, the industry has a unique fascination with death and loves to prematurely hold funerals for things that are still alive and kicking today. I recall when mobile gaming was really taking off and how it meant that consoles were dead now. Yet here we are, with the PS4 kicking ass, the Nintendo Switch positively pouring money into Nintendo's pockets, and the Xbox One, well, you know, being around. 3D TV is the future! You won't want to watch television any other way! Virtual reality, it's the future! You won't want to play games any other way! Oh, and also, virtual reality is dead! It's dead! Everything's dead, Dave! And let's not even start on horror games and the amount of times they've been put in the non-existent mortuary. But for all the prophecies of doom, none of this shit ever died. Except 3D TV and Sony's interest in VR, which lasted about a fucking week. This is an industry obsessed with the idea that one thing cannot exist, without replacing another. An industry where everything must close-mindedly be viewed as a zero-sum game. But that attitude is complete and total, utter bloody, total, complete and utter bollocks. 
Fast forward to now, and I think Xbox boss Shannon Loftus most adequately describes the current state of the single player market when they said, I don't think that it's dead per se, I do think the economics of taking a single player game and telling a very high fidelity multi hour story get a little more complicated, gamers want higher fidelity and they want higher resolution graphics. Gamers want higher fidelity and they want higher resolution graphics. Essentially it boils down to the old games are expensive to make and need additional monetization excuse we've discussed and pulled apart a dozen times before, but it sheds light on the attitudes of the modern industry. Plenty of companies still like and want single player only games, but not all of them want to invest in a product that can only be sold once and may be outfitted with some expensive DLC content. Either that or we see what we've seen with Shadow of War, Mankind Divided and Assassin's Creed where microtransactions are shoveled into a solo campaign, regardless of how it might totally unbalance or undermine or just fuck up the whole experience. It's a lot easier to get away with monetization in an online world where cosmetic DLC is more valuable on account of being able to show it off, and you can pump all sorts of game-changing items into the system to give paying players a competitive edge over others. With that in mind, I see the current state of single player games, at least in the triple A realm, not as a death, but a decimation. No, they're not going away anytime soon, but companies like EA have made it clear their interest in them has reduced significantly. And so, such companies can no longer be relied upon to make worthwhile story driven games. So we may see certain publishers lose interest in them, but when they're publishers like Electronic Arts, let's face it, we're not losing much of value. Not from companies that meddle and tamper and effectively piss all over everything they fucking touch. I mean, look at this shit. This is what EA did to Syndicate, and I think many of us would rather have had nothing. <laughs> And of course we need to remember that while 2017 was predominantly the year of the loot box, it nonetheless saw some fantastic single player experiences released in the mainstream space. Horizon Zero Dawn was a beautiful game that gave us an open world without microtransactions attached. Resident Evil 7 not only brought the series back to its horror roots, but gave us an effectively isolating solo story to chew through. Yakuza Zero reminded us that Sega still knows its shit when it wants to know its shit, Nier Automata was a whirlwind of unhinged genius, wholly reliant on its narrative structure to be as effective as it was. Life is Strange Before the Storm continues to prove that not only do solo games still matter, but adventure games are still viable for even big publishers like Square Enix. Bethesda, for all its faults, remains committed to single player and released the rather quite good Evil Within 2 as well as Wolfenstein 2. Even Ubisoft took a break from open worlds and online connectivity to publish a new South Park RPG. I mean, unless you played the PC version which was full of DRM, oh Ubisoft. This is all without mentioning Nintendo, which took the world by storm with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and the critically acclaimed fucking amazing Super Mario Odyssey, while Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is still on the way. Nintendo is definitely looking into extra monetization as seen with its free to start games, but I think we can always rely on them to make exemplary single player stuff. It's also crucial to recall that the AAA industry is just one part of the game's market, and an increasingly odious part compared to the realm of independent games. This year we've had solid games like Rhyme, the beautiful What Remains of Edith Finch, the absolutely incredible Sexy Brutal, the highly popular Steamworld Dig 2, and let's not dare forget about the utter darling that is Cuphead. I did just remember that technically Cuphead does have co-op, but fuck it. Point still stands. And those are just higher profile indies. The world is full of lesser known games like the alluring Morphite, the impressive early access title City of Brass, the delightful Passepartout, and the freaking adorable Slime Rancher, to name only a handful. Oh and shit, I almost forgot, we got Knack 2 this year as well. I mean, I never said they were all good.
We'd be remiss, of course, not to mention Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, the success of which has demonstrated so many things major publishers would tell us are impossible. Budgeted and marketed wisely, Hellblade gave us a fully linear, narrative-driven action-adventure game at half the price of a AAA game and managed to blow most of that so-called AAA shit out of the bloody water. If nothing else, that game ought to serve as inspiration for other mid-tier developers who are struggling within the all-or-nothing AAA machine. Incidentally, if any ex-Visceral developers do want to make a spiritual successor to Dead Space using the Hellblade model, I will buy a copy of that twice over. Hell, even if you crowdfund that shit, I have my wallet on standby, okay? So get on that. Please. Please just fucking do it! Sometimes gazing upon the ravaged wasteland of the industry with three A's to its name can be thoroughly miserable. And it's easy to look at what much of gaming has become with despair. Hell, a recurring theme of this very show is just how utterly fucked the business has become and what a write-off AAA gaming is turning into. But counting one's blessings is a valuable endeavour, and as awful as the business side of games gets, the artistic side still valiantly fights to stay not only relevant, but prominent. And while publishers might not be able to so easily milk them for obscene amounts of money, solo experiences still sell, still succeed, still get sequels. And as was demonstrated with the horror game resurgence that Amnesia and Outlast helped kick off, where AAA games falter, indie games will happily pick up the slack. Because they remember that audiences for the linear, audiences for the narratively focused, audiences for the single player experience never went away, and they're hungry, fucking hungry, for new content. Single player isn't going anywhere yet, it didn't die in 2008, and it won't die in 2018. Also, Electronic Arts can eat a big bucket of mouldy genitalia and choke on it the bunch of fuck Skeleton warriors. In addition to all that brilliant and on-point stuff I said, it's worth noting that a senior level designer at Visceral, well, I guess former Visceral senior level designer Zach Wilson, said that this whole single player debate is absurd, believing that single player is going to be around for quite some time. Life's good. I just want to die. In addition, the developers of Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, focused purely on single player. They said they didn't even want to do multiplayer and risk taking resources away from the solo campaign. So there are developers out there still wholly committed to making some good narrative driven games. So I don't think the future is quite so bleak. Yes, we are looking at something of maybe a decimation, but not a destruction. So keep on keeping on, have a good time, be good to yourselves and each other. That was Jerry Springer, wasn't it? Thank God for me, that's, that's my one, that's the one I do. Thank God for me. Jerry Springer's one is a lot nicer. Ubisoft. Just a regular reminder from me to you that Ubisoft is the crown prince of lies when it comes to the game industry. Despite saying on record that DRM doesn't work, you see, I remember it, I fucking remember these things. Despite saying DRM doesn't work, Ubisoft has basically tripled down on the DRM in Assassin's Creed Origins. It wasn't enough that it crammed de novo into the PC version of South Park The Fractured But Whole. It's not enough that Steam acts as a sort of DRM anyway, and Ubisoft has its own glorified DRM in the form of Uplay, a more friendly face to corporate control. No, 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 Assassin's Creed Origins has de novo, and it has VM Protect, which means if you count Uplay and Steam as well, that's four. That's four fucking slices of DRM from the DRM pie. But of course, DRM doesn't work, does it, Ubisoft? You said so yourself. You said so yourself. <laughs> Users have claimed that this has tanked the game's performance on PC. Ubisoft says that the tankage of performance is not due to the anti-tamper software, but Ubisoft is sort of a noted liar, so I'm just not going to believe whatever they say, whether it's true or not. Fuck you, Ubisoft. Fuck. 
Ubisoft. Whether you believe them or not, what is true is the fact that Assassin's Creed Origins on PC is lousy with DRM, and Ubisoft knows full well DRM is a load of bollocks. Put it in any way, because it wants to put a big middle finger right up the arsehole of people who actually paid for the game, aka the only people who, in the long run, are ever actually affected by DRM. Oh, Ubisoft.